There's a time to run, a time to stand. I can't be him. I'll die like a man. Die like a man. Die I think the time is. Um, It's, it's another vocabulary that I think is, 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 hasn't really been exploited enough yet. Light changing through space in time does have an incredible emotive force, and it's not realistic, but it's emotional. And I think that what happened, for example, in a bathroom in Paranoid Park, we knew that Gabe's character was in an emotional state. We knew that he's not used to filmmaking. And we also knew that we had to respect the integrity of this fragile moment in the film. So what do you do? So you just get rid of everything else and just see if it works. I'm holding a lamp. Rain is, is, is holding the camera and, and Gus is holding the, the sound because the sound of water and, and, you know, and his, his, his despair is very basic to the emotional um, experience. And then we're changing the film rates in, in camera to try to get this, you know, this, what is it, this anguish. And I think that, again, it's a, it's a manipulation of time and, and, and image and light and, and, and consciousness to try to suggest the emotional state of the kid. He's in turmoil, therefore the light is in turmoil. When you have a dream, it's out of time. When you have a memory, it's, it, it, it's out of time. Quote, unquote, real time. So why can't film be out of time? I think it has to be in order to engage us at that, that next level, which is dream. Film is dream. It has to be a dream. It has to, be, it has to have those energies of dream. The great films of, 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 of all history are, uh, are, are, are a dream. I think discovering film was, to me, was um, mistakes. I think that, that film, the first film I ever made, somebody gave me a camera, um, and I made all the mistakes possible. I didn't even know how sound and film, you know, we didn't, knew nothing. But I was intrigued by the discrepancy between what we see and how film responds to it. But you can't learn film from film. You can only learn film from life. I started late, quote, quote unquote, late in, in, in life in what I do, you know. But I, I think if I hadn't started at this time, which is in my 30s, then I wouldn't have had the life experience that which hopefully has repercussions to the way in which the films are made, you know, as opposed to a technical background. So becoming the artist is the most important thing. To, to have something to say means that you have to have lived. We're near the end of the film, we're near the end of the story. We know that the characters are in flux. We know that there's an ambiguity about their relationship. We know that there, something's going to go terribly wrong. So you wanted some energy. Um, secondly, we have this beautiful space which is going to be torn down literally in a week, <laughs> which happened to be the old Manila tra uh, train station. Um, and so, yeah, we just had this idea of, of, of getting us into the space as quickly as possible, and the only way to get there was up the stairs. <laughs> so, um, and if you didn't have the stairs, you wouldn't have the, the knowledge that you were on a higher level. Therefore, when they jump out the window, where they run along a roof, you wouldn't understand, you know, how they're running along, along a roof if they're in a restaurant. So I think that was kind of the basic, what's the word, the backstory. 
Uh, but the real thing was to give energy to the shot. And I think um, it was the first time ever I'd ever used a, a so-called Steadicam. It wasn't a real Steadicam, it was like in the film sense. It was a Steadicam that was used for, for videos. So we had to put the lightest camera possible. And I had to run along beside the guy. And the one thing I think was very important to us is that what we did is there's a change. Uh, you may notice that if you're a technical person, there's a change of aperture on the stairs. And the second big challenge was to avoid all the lamps outside the windows because it was quite a dull day. But there's actually a lot of lamps outside the windows and then they're just hidden behind the columns. I think the thing about what we do is that we always hope there's an energy, whether that energy is a, is a communicative energy, um, or an engagement with the character, or in this case, a response to the place. I mean, when I work with Wang Kaowei, it's, it's either have you read this or have you heard this? It's never about you know, what we're gonna shoot. It's always about something that's associative. It's always about uh, an emotional engagement with an idea. When we did Buenos Aires, um, which is called Happy Together, he said, he played a piece of music, and he said, this is how the city looks. Really? <laughs> that's, I mean, that's not very clear, right? It's not very, I mean, this is how the city looks. So one's response to the music suggests perhaps, oh, an elegance of movement, or a lack of movement, or perhaps a frenetic nature of movement, those kinds of things. Real art has those musical um, instances, those, those musical, the, the rhetoric of music, which is repetition, which is um, structure. So I think uh, the movement of our films is, is based on that. I've, I've always loved to dance. I've always, I don't know, for some reason, you know, I, I don't have a real musical culture, but I think that the way in which I move and the, the, the dance between the actors and the camera is, is basic to the rhythm of the film. And also the sense of the possible that I think one has to give an actor in space. You know, when a person says to me, where is my mark? I said, anywhere you want. I think it's really important that they feel that their appropriation of space is, is theirs. The, the, the consequences of, of the space in which you work, I think, inform the way in which you live, therefore the way in which you move, therefore the way in which the camera should respond to people in space. Even this film, which we're shooting now with Neil Jordan in the southwest of Ireland, the landscape informs, the, the light gives, it suggests uh, an approach. I think that's very basic to, to the approach that came from, I guess, the lack of script in the films of Wong Kar-wai, that you have nothing else to, to, to fall back on except the physicality of the space in which you work, the way in which light falls into a space, which is a response to what exists as opposed to an imposition on what you imagine. So the spaces in, in the movie for love are the spaces we're in. I mean, we're literally up against the wall. I had to hand hold the camera, not because I want to hand hold the camera, but because there's, there's no way to put a tripod there. There's no way for an assistant to focus. There's no way for the actors to, to, to be in that small space. Them being in this small space and the camera being so close to them implies a certain intensity and it takes you into a certain engagement with what's happening.
I totally dis distrust the idea that you can shoot New York in Toronto. I really believe that the fact that you're in New York and all the shit that you have to go through and all these crazy taxi drivers who are going to be screaming at you all the time, that informs the way in which you make a film. You come here because it's here and you make a film in the mood for love in that space is because it's in the mood for love. It's in the mood for Hong Kong. The great pleasure of cinematography is that it's collaborative, you know, I, I, as, as cliche as that sounds, it's the people with whom you share the experience that make it what it is. It's not you alone, it's not, you know, the, the script, it's not the director saying, I want this. Of course, these are things that push you in a certain direction, but so is light, so is space, so are the beautiful colors of a wall. So that the response to Maggie's form inside this beautiful structure, which is a Chinese dress, in this space, you know, made the film go in this direction. Nothing more or less. I think in most films that if you have an image that, that, that works, that's already a great film whether it's Casablanca, whether it's, um, I don't know, some moment in some you know, horror film. I think, you know, Maggie walking up the stairs, you know, which became a, a, you know, a poster in the Cannes Festival. Obviously, it says something to people. Usually, I'm the closest person to the actor. But I think that one has to engage one-to-one, -one, eye to eye, in order that the audience is also engaged. And I think that is that is the intrinsic and basic nature to the way in which people on my screen look the way they do. Because I think that they're saying, Chris, let's let's do it together. I hope that's a, that's what they're saying. And that's what I feel. I'm saying to them, let's do this together because I find you very beautiful. I, you look like this. This is how you are at this moment. 